whatever. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Like, you know, students are going to be there. It makes sense. Yeah. It needs to be. Amherst has a minimum requirement in most of the zoning that it's a minimum of two spaces per unit. They can go up from there, but they want a minimum of two. Yeah, but what's the maximum? I thought it was two spaces per bedroom is the maximum plus one. I'm not aware per of it. That seems a lot. Two spaces per bedroom seems a lot. You could have eight spaces for a four bedroom. I mean, right. Yeah. Right. You'd have to park a lot instead of a house. Right. Well, but it would be, you know, you still have to look at lot coverage. And and um, you know building coverage, lot coverage, and all of those metrics. I mean, obviously, if it's a small lot, you're not going to have that many spaces. So maybe there. it's uh, just make the blanket statement that it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that one per bedroom would be reasonable. Reasonable, yeah. yeah. And two, like unoccupied guest spots that never get built, or not permanently, like unless it's. To me, that seems like it would be more problematic because then you can have friends over. You know, if you have two spaces per bedroom, like you said, you've got a four bedroom apartment, now you've got room for eight cars off street. So mm -hmm. that seems to me to be excessive, but it's just a cursory. Well, number. whatever the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it needs to be. But I think that it's also unrealistic to say we're only going to give you two spots for <coughs> a four bedroom apartment because then people are going to be like, well, where, where, where do you expect us to park? You've got all kinds of area, you've got a two acre lot. I mean, you want us to park on street? I mean, what do you want us to do? So somewhere in the middle. But do, do we get, do we. Are we involved in telling him how many parking spaces he can have in like a single family home? Well, if he has to enforce it, enforce the bylaw. No, I mean, there's a difference between single family home and uh, an apartment that's commercial. Yeah, we're looking at it as commercial. Unless it's owner occupied, then it's still residential um, property. But the actual building is a single family home, right? But whether. It's yeah, but it's rented to five people who don't know each other. And it's not really, it's not an apartment building. I mean, it doesn't have hallways with locked doors and like an apartment building. Individual units kind of thing. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I was just wondering that, like, like, nobody tells me how many parking spaces I have to have at my new house, right? No. I mean, <laughs> you need Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was just curious about but I think we did, we did, uh, he had a plan that showed the parking spaces and I, I think it was just kind of, we don't, we don't really harp on that part, I think we just talked about. The only yeah. issue we drew with the parking plan was just to close off access to the Adley Tunnel, I was just said that yeah. the town already took care of. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Um, Sorry. Does the young lady want to come in? Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> you can do Alan's. Yeah. Well, then we can go skip down to eight then. Uh, Alan St. Hilaire, owner of 26 North Maple Street, map 10C, lot 61A, seeks a finding to alter and expand an existing two family non conforming structure. Okay, so what's the issue on this one, Tim? Which one are we doing? Uh, eight. Number eight? Yeah. St. Hilaire. Oh, okay. The this is the new one, right? No, oh. that's not the new one. You already voted on that. The new one's page two. And it oh, all okay. has to do with um, the senior center. Okay, so, so this one this one is each me. You weren't here for this one. Oh, oh we, we just, um, no, he was, John was here for it. It, it was, um, he's putting the, sec the second story on part of the house. I don't think John was here for that one. I think we, Oh, we didn't yeah. Have yeah. For, John wasn't here for that one. We, we, did the, we did the meeting informally, but we didn't. Yeah. Uh, we didn't oh, have the three we numbers. Didn't have yeah. numbers, so we didn't have the three numbers. Can we do Valerie? Valerie's first? Okay. Sure. And then we can do it. All right. So uh, we'll skip back or revert back to uh, number seven. Uh, future owner of uh, 40 West Street, map 4H, lot 56, seeks a special permit to convert a 1776 single family dwelling uh, into a two, into a two uh, as a lot of ways holding uh, C use stable attachment one. So this is I guess Basically clearly before 1960. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and it's been used as a two family forever. Yeah. So it's, unfortunately it's just been taxed as a single family. Did you have anything more to add to this or 
No, I just uh, wanted to be here when you have your final vote. Okay. Uh, really wanted to hear it. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to reaffirm the vote now. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. <laughs> so Alan said you have to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just for I guess my benefit. Sure. <laughs> Start over again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I can. I've got some visuals that I can provide. Uh, essentially. Existing two family buildings. And uh, what I want to do is expand on it. We're going to raise in part of it. These are some kind of areas that want us to show the property. Well, this is a nursing home down here, right? Right here. Yeah. That's right. It's right next to the nursing home. Uh, the nursing home is here, Home Depot is there, Woodbine is there. So this is the first residential building right. off of the Yeah. Uh, it's a commercial property. And it's kind of the old classic farmhouse where it starts it out and just goes as a train towards the back. It was a barn here previously. There was a barn over here and it was removed, yeah. Uh, there's a garage and then this four bay work building and there's kind of a shed barn over here that was removed from okay. 10 years ago. Uh, so I'm going to take down the back portion of it. It's going to be 40% of the structure and rebuild it. Uh, it's a story and a half right now. We only about two stories. So there's some elevations here that kind of show the floor and after. Mm -hmm. This is the rear. That's the front. Actually. That's the front. So if you look at the front of the structure. Oh, okay, yeah, here's that. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is the street view. Yeah. Porch, that's this porch here. Yeah. And this kind of shows the end of the section of it. Some really low windows. It's a little slow ceiling up there, so it's kind of functioning out there. The connecting, yeah, it'll be this room here will be part of the front unit. Um, so this is looking, this view here, maybe the front drive. Yeah. And um, after. This is the street view, so this view here, mm -hmm. before and after. So it does come a little higher, but not noticeably, and it's the same roof lines. And I brought these photos to kind of show what I didn't have the last time was that there's some mature trees here that are screening it from the road from the public view. So the visual impact is going to be you know, This view here is from the uh, North Maple uh, and the Eddie Lane on the Depot side. There's really no change in any of the setbacks because this is skinnier, it's going to get wider, but it doesn't come past the existing porch line. So we're not doing any more encroachment on the front or side setbacks. We are encroaching on the rear, but it's a 200 foot setback. So we're well within what we need to be. Uh, so first floor, essentially right now, it's a three bedroom on the first floor, three bedroom on the second floor. We'd be changing up so that this is one unit, this is two going from over under to uh, left to right. So there'll be three apartments in this. It'll stay two. Oh, it'll stay two. Yeah, it's just that right now the whole first floor is one unit and the whole second floor is another unit. Oh. Okay. This will go away and this will be, uh, right now the stairs are only a stairwell and we're just going to open it up into the kitchen so they'll open it. This will be one unit. Okay. And this will be the internal stairs for that second unit. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it'll be very similar to a colonial type room in the back, and the same in the front. It'll be a bit more like a cape in the front because it does have a story and a half. Uh, the internal stairs that were isolated to go up to the second floor now be opened up to serve that one unit. Mm -hmm. it stays a duplex, just a bit of a different configuration. Plenty of parking, plenty of area. It's a lines. What is the uh, board building used for? Storage. I have a couple of antique cars in there. And 
I actually own and operate a property management company and have some rentals of my own, so we keep you know, spare fridges and appliances and things like that. But, but uh, this is the, the plot plan that shows what the building garage, <coughs> existing structures, there's, there's tons of setback in all directions, except in the front, but we're not changing the front setback at all. Okay. Someone was here from the um, <coughs> nursing home just to see what was going on. They didn't have a problem or anything. Okay. Either. I'm good with it. Okay, did you have a motion? Second. Oh. No, you yeah, make the motion. Make the motion first, yeah. Okay. Uh, All yeah, right, so I'll make the motion to. Uh, to grant the finding to alter and expand the um, existing non conforming to the structure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sure. You're all good, Alan. Appreciate it. And do we want to go to the one on the back then? The first one we can, we can also do virtual things. You guys have previously heard it. Number one on the agenda. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, Town of Hadley Senior Center Building Committee seeks relief from zoning bylaw section 19.3, which requires a shingle roof appearance. Uh, the new senior center is designed with a metal standing seam roof. And it was withdrawn last time? No, it wasn't. Well, do we ever get the guy? Where are we getting guidance from town council? Yeah, town council talked to John. Yeah. And uh, since planning board hasn't heard this at all, we're going to wait for their initial hearing. Uh, one question that came to mind to me uh, today was uh, has historical commission had any input on this? Yes, they actually, um, I, they, they went through their hearing. And they, they did? They yeah. had a hearing on it? Yeah, and they approved it. They did? Okay. The only thing I guess I'd ask is that we make that part of our record. Did town council say that we could vote on this zoning bylaw relief now? Or yeah, we have they to? said we could. Okay. But uh, I'd like to go through at least the initial hearing of you know, I need work before we take action. If, if I might just step in, uh, just introduce myself. Uh, David Burson, uh, I work in the Hadley office, I'm uh, sorry, the Amherst office of uh, Peyton Wilson, Munson McConnell with Tom Reedy and Peter McConnell. Yeah. Um, so we were actually uh, um, last night hired as a special town council uh, on behalf of this this application. Um, and just kind of before you make your, uh, your decision with respect to at least the roof, uh, one thing I would like to say is that at least as far as uh, what we're requesting for the, uh, the relief from section 19.3. Um, part of the reason that we're actually requesting that relief from the ZBA before the planning board hearing um, is because, I mean, obviously they will ultimately have the final approval or say so on the special permit itself. But in order for them to, to really actually even hear this as a consideration in their you know, reviewing the application, uh, they're going to need to know that you know, we've already received relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals with respect to our request on the, the roof seam issue, um, which is why we're, we're requesting that you guys, that this board um, consider that relief tonight with the understanding that ultimately planning board's gonna make their decision one way or the other relative to whether this is an appropriate roof on this uh, on this building. And, and I would just like to add that, um, you know, there's plenty of examples of the same style roof um, right in the immediate area, um, First Congregational Church. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against the metals. Roof. Sure. Matter of fact, I think it's probably more, it's more prudent. Cost, yeah. Cost efficient. But you know, I guess there's going to be a lot of issues that come before this project, and you know, we're taking exceptions to things that we don't know. Are you know how many different issues are going to come before planning board? And I just, I'd at least like to have them have their initial hearing and see if there's some of those. You know, I imagine they'll have a you know, a checklist of how many different things they need to discuss and need to. Sure, right. But John, that's already been done through their site plan approval process. They have a peer review 
That's what the peer review was for. Uh, this is totally separate. Again, this is totally separate from the issues of site plan approval. All you have in front of you is one thing, and that is for whatever reasons that they give you, will you sit, give them relief to allow the standing seam roof on? Because our bylaws are written to state that metal roofs have to look like shingles. Well, that's not uh, a very efficient type of metal roof. The whole idea in which we want as a town is trying to make our buildings as energy efficient as we can. And the best way of putting solar onto a building is with a metal roof. Because one, you're not compromising the envelope itself. The clamping method is on the external portion of the roof. You're not putting holes in it. That's the whole reason for it. And that's one of the reasons we went to the metal roofs on this. Because if we can get the um, grants to put solar on these things to try to minimize the cost to the town, we're going to do it. And is the solar project part of the original or the proposed plan? If they have enough money, it can be. But right now, no, because based on estimates, that's one of the things that they had to eliminate. We're always, however, looking for a donor. In terms of the order with the site plan, site uh, plan approval, if um, if does the planning board still have um, a say over what, what the roof will look like? If, so I understand the planning board's point of view is that the bylaws don't allow for a metal roof, so they're saying they can't they can't say, do anything with that. If we give a variance to allow them to ask for a metal roof, does the planning board still have authority to say we're not going to we're not going to approve it? Yes, they actually can. And, and if I may also jump in, so the the metal roof, that 19.3 section of the village overlay, it's actually like a, a design review standard for the permit granting authority. So it's, it's meant to be kind of, you know, they say, you know, make best efforts, uh, detail elements which are recommended and suggested is kind of like the preamble to the section. Mm -hmm. So there are things that the planning board, you know, typically should be looking for in their review of the permits. Um, but ultimately, we think it's more appropriate and more conservative to, to make sure that we have the ability to even bring that to their attention. <coughs> So that when they're reviewing the application, they know, you know, they've already received the appropriate relief from the zoning board. We can actually consider this seamed metal roof. Well, it gets rid of their ability to say that this is not allowed as like in right off the bat. bright line right. uh, circumstance. So, but they still they still have they still have oversight over the design elements of it. Correct. So if if you tried to put a bright yellow roof on there or something, they could oh, still God. say, I, yeah, but just. Well, the, 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 like, you know? yeah, what they do would say is, in our opinion, it's not appropriate to. Just because we say that we that they can ask for a metal seam roof, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean that doesn't that's mean the that. ultimate. Yeah. Okay. Thing. So we're not we're not the ones making. Right. You just they're to ask for relief from the bylaw, but but the ultimate say yes. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like he just said, you just said. Well, well what it does is it put more pressure on them because. It, you're going into them with approval from that's us. Why they that's why I don't want the. But we're only to put the cart before the horse. It isn't. But we're we'd only be giving so we're only giving them approval to like ask for it. The planning board can still say no. We don't we don't want to put a metal roof. We don't want you to have a metal roof for whatever reason. Yeah, we're not we're not necessarily backing the planning board into a corner. They still have the option to say no. All we're doing is granting them the permission to like. Well, you're, what that. you're doing is you're granting them a change from the zoning bylaw right. that says that the zoning board is allowing it. And so then you go into the, the planning board and say, well, the zoning board has already approved it. But they have, the, again, it's just a design standard. And they, they have the ultimate say over it. And that has happened in, a number of times in the past, John. But when, you, when you're saying the cart before the horse, that's not technically true on what, what's trying to be done here, okay? And it's not putting 
it's it's not putting them in a corner. Um, it 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 allows, it actually allows the planning board a little latitude to make a decision either way, instead of just one way. And it's not that they they're not going to come back and say thanks a lot zoning board for for granting the metal roof because now we're pushed into a corner. No, they're not. That's all we can say to you, John, so <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> so what do we... It's up to you. Well, uh, it, if you, 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 you don't you're also the chair, yeah. so if, you, if your opinion hasn't been swayed, you look at them and say... Well, I, would, I, I, I would say we table it. We're tabling mm -hmm. for to go back to the planning board. Yeah, to come back here. Again. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I'll once again state: I mean, the planning board can't give us that relief with right <laughs> without this first. So you're kind of it, the and correct me if I'm wrong. You like what I feel the gentleman is saying that we might be adding an unnecessary step in exactly. this chain of events, whereas. We're not necessarily twisting the plan board's arm. We're just giving them the opportunity to rule on this then and there. Without and going through, through another step. Because yeah, if, they, if they have no problem with it, and but and they're all yes on the middle of the standing sea metal roof, they're going to have to come back here anyway for us to grant the same permission for them to even say that they can do it. Very well said. <laughs> so, I mean, it's... I mean, it It sort of seems like if um, if if you don't and if you don't want to, if you don't want to do the variance, I think I think we should vote down the variance, mm -hmm. and let them move on with their plan, because I think if we I think I think by like the, like they're just inevitably going to come back and ask us again but because the planning board can't. Yeah, the problem with they will, they won't be able to come back for two years. Right. For two well, years. if we vote it down, I know, but. Yeah. If we just if we just table it, they're going to come back and and I think so. Well, I think like I said, if, if the planning board, you know, reviews this at, in their first meeting, uh, public hearing. But the planning board is going to say, there's a law that there's, there's a, that the, that section 19.3 says it has to be a shingle like appearance, so we're going to deny your your metal but, roof. And then they're going Well, you you made the decision, unfortunately, when you do that, that that there won't be any ability to do a relief. Uh, if John if if John doesn't want to vote in favor of it, I would table it because that's going to be the request. And, that, and that's actually right. If, if yeah, I, mean, not, I, I, I don't want to stop not, this. I, I just certainly don't want to push this board into voting it down. I, I would much rather have a continuance to your same, next meeting. Same here. I would much rather that scenario than please do that. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. I was just kind of yeah. saying that if John's answer is always going to be no, then it would save everyone time to just say no. no when no. he's no, it's not always going to be John's no. What he's asking is, <laughs> no. he wants well, I'm just a, I'm just asking John that. I'm, no, I'm he just wants the opinion of the. Of I, I want John, the John, John, you're allowed to have your own opinion. I'm not like trying to bully you on yeah. it. I'm just saying that if you can say right now, I don't care what the planning board says, I don't care what anyone says, I'm just going to say no every time they come in. Well, so, I don't know, that's why I was asking, because in that case, we should just say no now, because no. then they, they can move on. No. But if, if, it, if it matters what happens th throughout the, as it goes, then yeah. I, then I, yeah, I agree. And, and the same with the, with the next one. I mean, that one's even got more controversy regarding with, what, 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 the frontage deal. What is that? Well, well you've got the... Uh, You've got the, uh, let's do this one first. Yeah, well, let's finish that off and then he can explain to you. So, um, then I would take it that we'll have a motion to table. A motion to table? Yeah. Second. Second. Yeah, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> can we start a date? Yeah, when's the next? Um, planning board meeting is 19. And the 21st, are you available the 21st? Yeah. On the Thursday? Mm -hmm. Is everybody available the 21st? I am. Yeah. 
So that'll be June 21st. Seven? Yeah, I won't be around, so you guys are going to have to open the Make sure up. there's a key. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I opened up tonight. Yep. Okay. Uh, the uh, Town Senior Center Building Committee seeks a finding for frontage nonconformity to existing frontage. 145 feet for the proposed senior center is less than required by current zoning. That's the wrong number. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That's so the, the feet? I'll, I'll correct it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, they seek variance from section 8.8.8 .8 to install underground propane tanks. Okay. And who wants to speak? To so I'll, I'll speak. So the, uh, and I have a, uh, start with the, uh, the frontage piece. Apologize oh, yes, for bringing out the big plans, but it's easier to see. So the uh, the existing the the project required uh, in the business in the business district is 175 feet. The existing frontage is actually 160.76 feet. The existing is 160.76. Yeah. So this is this course right here is 160.7. So this is where the sidewalk is right now. Um, yes. The uh, reality of the situation is that this has has obviously uh, been continued and used since 1920 when this property was taken by the town. Um, frontage hasn't changed. Um, this has been a continuous use of the property. Um, and we, we believe that it's certainly not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and it doesn't derogate uh, the intent or purpose to buy a lot to allow us to continue to use this lot um, with the uh, frontage being less than you know, 15 feet difference. Um, that's our pitch. I think it's, it's appropriate in this case. Um, this board has the authority to do that. Um, and unlike, unlike the roof piece, um, which the, you know, is a design consideration for the planning board, um, this is really more of a pure zoning question uh, for this board to consider. Now, I see it says senior center here. And you said this was the that's existing the sidewalk? That's the existing for, uh, yes. Okay, so I thought the library so was going to get a This is the, this is the as is. This, this is as is. That's, that's the current. Okay. This is the, oh, this is the, okay. This is as is. Oh, that's not the proposed, that's the existing. That's existing. Okay. Well, we're, and we're not changing the frontage at all. The frontage is remaining no. the same. Okay. And so the library will be the first building, right? Yes. Correct. So does the library have to come before us also? Because two buildings using the same frontage which is legal and and oddly for commercial buildings yeah multiple well I'm just saying they have to come before us also that's your opinion <coughs> it's up to you guys I don't well okay. it this is strictly use of a non-conforming property you're chain you're, you're modifying it from one building taking it down and putting two more buildings up. It's just the same question on the same <coughs> line. So and the same owner. And the same owner. I, so I would argue that, I mean, obviously this is what I'll argue, but I'll argue that the, as far as variances are concerned, particularly with this sort of type of variance, because it applies to the lot as a whole, it, it wouldn't apply to each building. It's, it's essentially right. you're permitting us to use that, the same amount of frontage that we've always used for that lot um, but for the new altered use. How come it's not a finding? What's that? How come it's not a finding? It, it would be a finding. Okay. So it's not a... So no, it's not a variance. Not a variance. This, this is a finding from the, from this board, it's not a variance. The variance is for the underground 
So the, the technical finding that this board would be considering is just that is whether or not this change um, is not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming coverage. And it's our it's our belief that the um, that this change in use is not substantially more detrimental than the existing use of the frontage situation. Um. Been used as an elementary school. It's been used as a senior center. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be used as a senior center and as a library. Um, I guess. I guess. What. What I'd like to see is what the two pieces are going to look like in terms of you know how they're situating everything because obviously they're going to be made to fit one way or another. Well, I mean, as far as. As far as what the planning board will be considering, I mean, you're ultimately, what you'd be considering is whether or not we can use the existing frontage as is for the proposed use, whether or not it's going to be detrimental to the neighborhood. But the planning board, what they'll be considering is site circulation, you know, what appropriate and safe, um, you know, movement throughout the site will be. Um, and that is something that we'll have to be submitting, you know, professional engineers will be providing information in terms of appropriate site circulation, um, what the safest um, routes are throughout the site. Um, so we really do believe that actually, if anything, you know, when we do make whatever changes ultimately occur on that site in terms of the site circulation and movement throughout, it's ultimately going to be a safer site than it is currently. Jen, I can weigh in on this one. Yeah, I can go ahead. On it because it's a new one. <laughs> <coughs> it seems to me that the um, that the request for a finding is. Reasonable. I, mean, I don't see that it, um, well, I really don't see that it is less, uh, that it's more detrimental to the neighborhood. It seems to me that it's pretty close to what it's always been. I guess, you know, my, my only concern at this point is, you know, they're going to put a lot through this lot or a lot on this lot and how it's situated other parking and traffic and everything. That, that's too many issues. All they're that's looking the at point. That's, yeah. Yeah. They're, all they're looking at here is um, the existing frontage. Is it more or less detrimental? Only one thing. <laughs> so. uh, and what is the required? It's one seventy five. Well so we're looking at just fifteen feet. Nice. Sure. Fifteen feet. It has been for almost 100 years. It may have actually been long. I, we didn't look previously to the use of it as a school, but it may have actually, I mean, it would have been the same frontage even before the town took it in 1920. It wouldn't have been the same? start until 1961, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that was 125 back in those days. It's just like all the houses, like, uh, that you've dealt with uh, people along Middle Street and West Street, they've taken them down and they want to rebuild. And they've come in for a finding because their lots are narrow. Those are existing lots. They're not changing the lots. They're not doing anything. They're, and the, the major issues that you dealt with on those was uh, the setbacks with those. And uh, luckily with with these buildings, there's no issues with setbacks. Or any other dimensional requirement, yeah, in fact. They, uh, they comply with everything, everything else. So. All right, I'll ask for a motion. I move that we find <laughs> the existing frontage 145 feet as uh, 165. Oh, 160.7. 160. Yeah, that's uh, that was my mistake because that's what was on the assessor's map. And I took it not off of the um, survey map. Okay, so not so 165 feet, and that it is not um, more non more um, detrimental to the existing neighborhood. The only thing I would just mind, it's, it's 
it's 160.76. I just don't want it. Yeah, it does show that right here. <laughs> Turns out we lied. There's five more feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Second. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Got that one down. Aren't you glad to have me back? Of course. <laughs> um, and then uh, also seeks a variance from section 8. 8, eight to install underground propane tank. Um, I have a letter from the fire chief. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm from uh, Chief Bank Needle. I spoke directly with both John Mischkowski and Max Moski to review the underground propane tank issue. Uh, they both agree with me that this is a non-issue as we have numerous residents and commercial properties with LP USTs. I am the AHJ on the permitting and Inspecting of underground tanks and lines to the building, and I am comfortable with the plan that we have reviewed, and I feel that it meets the 527 CMR uh, 1.00 fire protection regulations and references to NFPA 58. Uh, I will make every effort to be at the meeting as this really needs to be removed at the next town meeting. What do you mean by that? I think the uh, it's the bylaw. The bylaw needs oh. to be modified, just oh, okay. like the um, metal roof portion of the bylaw needs to be modified. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, and are these tanks going to serve as both buildings? No. No, just just the senior center. One needs to be separate for the generator. That is a uh, fire regulation. They're going to have a generator too. They have to. <laughs> it's a heating <laughs> cooling center for the town. See. Yeah. So you'll see there's, there's a, a second propane tank just for the generator here, um, and then another one, the, the primary tank, uh, located here. The size of things? Um, I believe they're 1,000 gallons. Yes, they are. propane. Um, so they're underground, right? Underground, correct. Um, I believe that this bylaw was enacted in the 90s with respect to these tanks, um, and they have come a long way in terms of the safety um, and the mechanics of these, these tanks. And I wish that the fire chief were here because he way better versed in, in the actual technical specifications of these tanks. Um, however, um, this just um, is, is somewhat necessary for this project. We don't want to have these giant tanks sitting above ground. I think it'd be a huge eyesore uh, for everybody involved. Um, and because of the, the width of the actual, the lot itself, as, as Mr. Nahart indicated, they are relatively narrow. Uh, we would be giving up <coughs> some either open space or parking area um, if we had to put them above ground. The, there's so many advantages to put them underground. And the primary, one of the primary reasons for one of the tanks is because we can't have natural gas anymore. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's right, gonna, that's why the library isn't having propane? Because they're on gas. Mm -hmm. What do you mean they're on gas? They have a gas Yeah, they've got oh, a gas uh, Yeah, we have gas and, um, at that building right yeah. now, the Hooker yeah. School has gas. Right. So they can. They can hook up to that. And you can't yeah. put another pipe underneath. Can't do it. Can't hook up. Yeah. Can't, can't hook up use any more gas. There's However, no more gas to use. When the moratorium ends, we will have piped it so we can use natural gas. And then we will replace it with gas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because that is our preference. But. Mm -hmm. everyone's preference right now. But in the meantime, this is all our alternative. Well, you're only our only option. The only yeah. This is a dumb question, I'm sure, but where is the drive here? It looks. Oh, it's not showing the. It's whole not thing showing because this is the. These the, tanks aren't deep underneath the parking lot. <coughs> <coughs> no, no, no. no. So here, yeah. This is the drive. Oh, this okay. Here. And all the parking lot <coughs> over here. This is in the green space. Here's a big picture. Excellent. And and once again, you know, these are still being vetted for the planning board's review. So it's, I mean, it is possible that these, you know, the proximate, these are proximate locations, they may not be definite. What we're asking for is, is, is permission ultimately to, to use underground storage tanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Propane is cheap now either. It's cheaper than oil. Yeah. More efficient too, cleaner. 
I didn't ask for one yet. <laughs> I didn't think there was enough going on there. And do you have any questions? Um, so, I mean, I, it's not really a question, more of like a statement that um, you know, typically this is the type of thing that I would say that um, makes me kind of nervous uh, for us to weigh on, kind of like when we are creating things from whole cloth with apartments and things like that. Um, but uh, that's why I asked to see this. I mean, it makes me feel better that the fire chief is on board with it. Uh, just because I don't know anything about these things, and generally we have to sort of trust the uh, professionals, <laughs> the bylaws, and the professionals. Um, I, I think I think we probably can give a fair amount of put a fair amount of weight in in that. Does the uh, city fire marshal have any input on this? Or Jim. Jim. Jim Jim the chief, on the they're on it too. They understand the issues. I just want to. Wondered if in a commercial type building, if they had to. No, what Mike has is the um, person that makes the decision. Yeah, it meets all the requirements. I mean, I'm not questioning well, Mike's. The, I, what I'm questioning is, does the state have any? Yes. No, Mike has the full. I think I believe the state. I mean, the state has their own level of, of standards and regulations that, that he has to. A buy, a buy side, right, and enforce. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't um don't don't a lot of don't the some of the newer restaurants have this type of thing? Uh, Texas Roadhouse does. It's above. But they're above ground. They're above ground. Yeah. It's not. They're not the best looking thing above ground. To be honest. No. They're just big cylindrical. Yeah, I've got. I've got one on my place. Gary, yeah. Uh, pointed out that it also, unfortunately, because it would be visible from Route Nine, could be a, a real hazard for some loony with a gun. Mm -hmm. And another reason to bury it. <laughs> Let me make a motion. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I move that we grant a variance uh, from Section 8.8.8 .8 to install underground propane tanks in the Hadley Senior Center building. Second. Michelle, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 If you need copies, I'll make copies right no, now. You need, you no, 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 this is fine. She can send me copies. So. Okay. okay. Which um, one? Which was it? You need this stuff. Yes. Yes, no, sir. The only copies that they gave us. Oh, that, that one that oh. has to do with the first one on there. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes.